Hi there everyone, we have a very special guest today. This is Don Pettit. He's an astronaut. He's been into space not one, not two, but three times. First time in London, came to pay a short visit and we've roped him into one of our videos. I'm so sorry. This sounds like it's going to be a fun little adventure. All right, you've got the white gloves of destiny on. I white gloves, yeah, but these are a little tarnished. I mean, there's some... They're, they're battle-worn. They've, they've, oh, okay. they've seen some adventure. Now, I was going to tell you about this lucky dip, but you told me you don't know what a lucky yeah, dip... Yeah, I, I thought a lucky dip was like a double scoop of ice cream on a cone. Let's show him what a real lucky dip is here at the Royal uh, Is this some UK sort of thing? Close your eyes. Close your okay, eyes. Okay, my eyes are closed. You know what to do. Okay. Choose a drawer at random. Okay, I'll choose a drawer at random. Right. I'm gonna... Okay. Uh, How about uh, this guy? <laughs> that one's empty. <laughs> it's like a black hole. Okay, let there. me let me go over here. Okay. okay, okay, good. I'm just gonna do this guy. All right, we have here basil hole. Details of experiments made with an invariable pendulum at various places. Pendulum experiments. Oh, pendulum. I've done pendulum experiments on I've... space station. And, and rhetorical question, a pendulum is a gravity machine. So if you are in an environment where the local effects of gravity are nulled, how can you make a pendulum? That's rhetorical, so thank goodness I don't have to answer that. I'm going to put the spring on the weight end and move the spring out like this. And now, for small angle approximation, which we use in a pendulum, that spring is going to basically replace the force due to gravity that would make a pendulum work on the surface of Earth. So, so I'm going to do a backup dip, right? Okay, I'm going to go over here. Oh. I'm going to go way down here. Down. All okay. Right. okay, yep, good. Lots and of cars to choose from. Here we go. Okay, what's this guy say? Harry Hearn, Hypothesis of the Tides, written to Dr. Wallace, and by him communicated to M. Oldenburg for the Royal Society. If that's tides as in tides, you've hit gravity again. I've hit gravity again, only this is like lunar gravity. This is, this is interesting. Okay, Don, well, there we go. For a man famous for breaking the confines of gravity, you've chosen two gravity cards. Now we're going to go downstairs and find out what we got. Cool. No, let's, let's, do do it. It. let's do it. Let's do it. Wow, this is like secret passages. Here we go. Are you feeling nervous or expectation? No, I, I'm, or... Just, I'm just amazed at the amount of stuff here. It's wonderful. So what have you've we got? got the Philosophical Transactions Volume for 1823. What has Don pulled so from the catalogue? So we're looking uh, for, oh, see, we could have had Sir Humphrey Davy on electromagnetism. Humphrey there, Davy? But, no, oh. no, we didn't choose that one. Here we go. Right. This is what we've pulled. What is it? So this is sent from His Majesty's ship Conway, which is at Spithead on the 23rd of February 1823. So this is a covering letter to the Royal Society detailing what uh, experiments have been made with the invariable pendulum. Ah, so here we have the signature of Basil Hall. So Basil Hall is a naval officer and uh, Captain Cater is the other figure involved in here. So they're clearly travelling and making observations as they're going. What does it say here? Rio de Janeiro. Pendulum. Pendulum experiments were made at this place. So they did two experiments in Rio. Those guys would freak out if they knew what you did with the pendulum. Yeah. So on the back of the paper here is the results. So um, Yeah, I'm looking at that. So it's small angle approximation for a pendulum, that's good. Yep, so they're looking at the pendulum as it's swinging and using a small telescope to make very fine observations of how far that pendulum is going. Details of experiments made with an invariable pendulum at the Galapagos Islands. But, oh, oh, nice. Not bad. So they're, they're getting about a bit. They're getting around, yeah. uh, just uh, different sides of the continent. What do you think your second card's like? Should we give that one a try? <coughs> This is letter book three. Oh, what's this? Oh, uh, so look, it's a... I always get distracted by these. You do, don't you? I have no idea what that is, but it looks cool. It, it's, it looks astronomical. It oh, this is the moon. It is, yes. Yeah, and that's the earth. earth. There we go. Wow. And this could be connected with your paper. So let's, no. let, let's just see. So this is the one you selected, which is Mr. Hearn's Hypothesis of the Tides, written to Dr. Wallace and by him communicated to Mr. Oldenburg, who's the secretary of the Royal Society, 
for the Royal Society. So this is just some guy yeah. having mm. a guess at why we have tides. Mm. Wow. Well, not a guess. I assume he's done a little bit of thinking. But and in fact, I think that illustration yeah. does yeah, belong cause, cause with the look. paper. Yeah. So, so, I yeah, see? so here, here, presumably, th this is tidal. So I, when I pointed this piece of paper, I thought it was because we weren't going to get to talk about it. But it turns out this yeah, is connected yeah, to the moon. This letter. is cool. Yeah. This so, is way cool. So he's, he knows it's the moon. right? They've connected it to the moon. I bet they thought that was lunacy back then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it'd be good to see if there's a, there's wow. a conclusion. I'm just going to leave these two to it. <laughs> so he says, um, thus have I shown you what has given me so much satisfaction about the motion of the sea or tides. And by the by what hath satisfied me more than anything else about the motion of the planets. So he's not putting the tides down to just the moon. He's putting the tides down to planets. Well, well he, he's saying two different things here. So he's giving an idea of, of what causes the motion of the planets and, and the tides as well. So he's got seems to have two theories going on here. Ah. My hypothesis is this, that the Earth, besides the diurnal and annual motion, hath another directly from north to south for the space of six hours and some odd minutes, and then again from south to north for the same time, and that in this motion the Earth does not always move to the same points, but further when we have spring tides than at other times. This is amazing. Like He's saying, OK, we all know about this movement mm. of the Earth, but he's mm. now coming up with another movement to try and explain tides. So and he's, he's coming with the tides wobble. would be really important if you deal with sailing ships. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing the foundation of knowledge that we have that we don't even think about where it came from. We just use this knowledge at tides, the moon, the planets, all these sayings, you go to your physics book or Wikipedia or wherever you happen to get your information and you learn it, you do your homework assignments and you start to apply this and you don't realize the amount of effort it took to invent it or think about it in the first place. Even when these people are wrong, they're, they're struggling to try and comprehend the problem, which is, is, is kind of interesting. So Keith, and, and it's okay to be wrong yeah. when, when the answers are not in the back of the book. Mm. Here we see the book and there are no answers in the back of the book. You have to mm. figure it out yourself. And this is one of the delightful aspects of being in a frontier. It's a place where your normal intuition does not apply. It's a place that's rich in discovery and the answers are not in the back of the book. This is the first time we've had an astronaut, a man who has spent 370 days of his life in space. Could we possibly have had two better choices? I, I, it's extraordinary. He couldn't have picked better. And I did it with my eyes closed. Yeah, out of this world. <laughs> and I did it with my eyes closed, you show off. <laughs> I feel very privileged to be holding this. This is another piece of wood. It's in a, pl it it's in like a, looks like sort of a vacuum sealed plastic bag. Well, not just any plastic bag. This is a special NASA space bag. A NASA space bag. Yep. Go on then. What, so, tell me. This particular piece of Newton's apple tree, and you can see it's genuine because it says IN on it, uh, went up into space. 